Hi, I'm Alan Miranda. I'm the head of JLabs Canada. JLabs is Johnson & Johnson's incubator in the Mars complex in Toronto. I would say that uh, the sector is probably uh, pre-COVID stronger than it ever was. Uh, I'd say the strengths we have is really uh, a strong group of entrepreneurs. And I think what we would also have is an innovation ecosystem that's been built up around it to support those, those entrepreneurs. So we've always been good at basic science. I think what we've seen in the last uh, five years is innovation infrastructure to help those companies grow and scale. JLabs, of course, is part of that. Uh, I think entrepreneurs are always good at taking risks. And now what we have is the infrastructure to help them grow and scale their companies and help them understand what the risks are so that they can uh, mitigate those risks. One of our strengths is really a, a deep knowledge in, in the big basic sciences. So I, th I think we have a strong research community. And, and I think you have to start from there. I think in terms of uh, where we compete with other places, I don't think we have the same scale. Uh, but the stuff that's good is really good. And I think the, the competition for that technology is a lot less than it is in other places. So I think uh, for the venture capitalist who wants to come to Toronto and find good technologies, they're there. There's less competition. I think the entrepreneurs are very coachable. And I think all of that leads to great opportunities for the venture capitalist that wants to come to this ecosystem and really roll up their sleeves and work with these companies. I think when you look back 10 years ago, I, I think that the, the, you'd see the same old characters starting companies. And now I think what you're seeing is a greater diversity of people starting companies, people who have been trained in a system or have gone through academia, understanding that commercialization is something that you can and should do. And you're also starting to see the second round of people who've started companies in the past who are now coming back and helping uh, or starting a company again. And so I think You've got a more seasoned group of entrepreneurs. You've got entrepreneurs who are more risk uh, tolerant. And as I said previously, you've got a commercialization infrastructure that can help them grow and scale. Mars Innovation now, TF, Toronto Innovation Acceleration Partnership. They're, they're, they're the tech transfer office, if you will, for all of the downtown hospitals. And they're They've done a great job seeding and starting companies and uh, attracting uh, multinational companies, so foreign direct investment into those companies. Uh, Mars Discovery District uh, has done a, a job putting the whole hub on the map, so bringing companies like uh, uh, large entities like J&J &J, as well as other tech companies to Toronto and has really fostered this intersection of, of tech uh, with the life sciences. So Mars Discovery District has done a great job. I think when you look at places like FACET, uh, which have taken uh, very nascent oncology technology and turned those into companies, been able to attract investment, uh, they have put Toronto in the map and they're doing a, a great job of starting and seeding those companies. One of the things we always look at is, you know, the, we have an innovation index that, that encompasses a number of different facets, but certainly Toronto sits in the top 15, 10 uh, innovation hubs in the world. So first of all, from a pure innovation perspective, Toronto's on the map. I think what we saw is exactly what I talked about is you've got great discovery sciences. Uh, the field was ours. There wasn't a great number of health companies actually exploiting the value that we see in Toronto. And so there was a, a great chance for us to come in and catalyze this growth because we have great discovery science. We have a, a nascent innovation infrastructure that was being built. We could be part of that. And so coming in when we did, we were able to uh, really be the first to take, advantages of, take advantage of all the things we saw brewing in, 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 in Toronto. But I think it starts first and all with a great life science uh, discovery research ecosystem. So there's a lot of great science going on in Toronto and, and really that's what we're capitalizing on. Our experience has been fantastic. So I think when you look at the commercializing net, commercialization network that I talked about, uh, TAP, Mars Discovery District, FACET, uh, all of these houses have worked collaboratively with us in, in, in a fantastic way to find opportunities and help those opportunities grow. I'd say from a government perspective, you know, that we, we were brought here in partnership with the Ontario government. Uh, uh, that, that government sees value in what we're doing and has been very supportive of what we've done and continues to be supportive. 
Uh, I think even from a federal perspective, we've introduced our model to the federal government and they understand and value uh, what we as J&J have done. And I think we've changed the conversation around innovation. And I think government is starting to understand that multinationals are focusing on innovation both at the early phase and at the late phase. And I think we're starting to be rewarded for that. So I think governments are starting to see the value of ecosystem of innovation across the entire life cycle. And they value that the input we put in terms of this early stage component of innovation. I think the investments that are made in basic research I think that lays the groundwork for having great innovation. So I think uh, government granting agencies over the last 10 years have have done a good job of investing in cutting edge research and and they've been theming it, which I think is important. So again, rather than spreading things like peanut butter, there's been certain themes. And so I think that the focus on artificial intelligence, uh, the focus on cell and gene therapy has actually created a, a synergy between those. So now we're seeing uh, crossovers between companies that are selling gene therapy that are also using artificial intelligence to accelerate their, their drug discovery or, or, or technology engine uh, commercialization efforts. So I think the investments in artificial intelligence and cell therapy have really put us at a, at a different level or in, in, in competition with some of the bigger markets in the world. And I think what we need to do is sustain that. And so I talked about it a bit and we at J-Labs are focused on it is how do we help these nascent companies? How do we help them reach the market and be successful? How do we give them the advice they need, the market facing advice? How do we give them risk capital? How do we find the right uh, talent to help these companies? Because that's another, another issue that we run into. Uh, do we have enough talent here to sustain these companies? Uh, and that's something I think government and, and industry has to really focus on is how do we keep talent here in Canada and help these companies grow. I think when a crisis hits, the benefit of a one payer system or a one, uh, one payer health system is that they can get moved quite quickly and they're focused on the public good. That's the, that at the end of the day is what they're responsible for. So I think the adoption of these technologies has been quite strong in Canada uh, because you have to. And so I think what we've seen is these health technologies that can really make a difference in terms of getting data to patients, getting data to healthcare providers, uh, to give remote uh, monitoring of patients. All of these things now have been adopted by the health system. And I think most importantly, the health system now is really under pressure to break down barriers internally and silos internally and really be focused on how do we how do we bring technology into our hospitals, into our healthcare delivery network. And so I think companies that are in those spaces uh, can certainly, uh, will certainly, I think, reap great advantage in the next three to five years. I think because of COVID-19, you're going to see an increased focus on uh, vaccines and, and, and therapies that can prevent the future pandemic. So I think COVID-19, we're going to see solutions in the next, you know, 12 to 18 months. But I think this has put people on notice that there is going to be another pandemic. And I think uh, because of our, our understanding and some of our, our cell therapy, our gene therapies, that that's a strength of Toronto region, that's a strength of Canada. So those types of technologies at a base level, they're going to be very critically important as we develop the next wave of therapies for the next or, or vaccines for the next pandemic. And so I think that'll be a place where uh, smart investors and smart companies will reap some benefit in Canada because we have a real strength in cell therapy and gene therapy. I think as, a, as, a, as an ecosystem, we're also seeing uh, government understand that life sciences is something you really need to pay attention and focus on. And so I think you're seeing government starting to listen more to the life science community and think about how do we sustain this industry in the longer term through procurement, uh, changes in how we procure, how do we incorporate innovation into procurement so that we don't get into a situation we were at the start of this pandemic where our supply chains and some of our products are dependent on foreign entities. I think they're going to see uh, a greater focus from government to want to build a homegrown biotech industry. And I think that will benefit all of us.